Hi doctors good morning today we are going to discuss about some of the aphorisms from our organ of medicine and in this session we are not going to discuss all about aphorisms instead only few of the aphorisms which have been discussed earlier or which have been asked in previous question papers those we are going to discuss first comes fixed and accessory miasm the question can be asked like this In this aphorism Hanuman has given the examples for fixed miasm or accessory miasm otherwise the question can be asked which are all the following uh, following comes under the fixed miasm so in 46th aphorism Hanuman has mentioned about these miasms mainly in this aphorism examples of diseases which are cured by similar stronger diseases have been mentioned and under the fixed miasm hanuman has given the examples like the smallpox measles and whooping cough smallpox measles and whooping cough if we reciprocate m we will get w so a small m and w small for smallpox m for measles and w for whooping cough next comes accessory miasm here cowpox have been mentioned so fixed miasm small mw accessory miasm cowpox next comes high estimation this high estimation is mentioned in the aphorism 17 annihilation of the disease and restoration of health is the highest mission of physician that had that has been mentioned so 17 highest mission also it in 18th aphorism it has been mentioned that sole indication what is that sole indication here the sole indication the word mentions the totality of symptoms so totality of symptom is the sole indication or sole guide to choice of a remedy so question can come like this sole indication or totality is mentioned in which aphorism mainly 18th aphorism in first aphorism physician's mission has been told but in 17th aphorism highest mission so as per the first aphorism physician's high and only mission is to restore the sick to health to cure as it is termed so so first aphorism physician's mission and 17th aphorism highest mission unprejudiced observer or portrait of disease have been mentioned in 6th aphorism so without prejudicing anything we have to observe the changes in the health of mind and body next comes portrait portrait of disease perceptible signs which represent disease in whole extent that will be represented by the patient himself so that should be observed by the physician so portrait of disease and unprejudiced observer given in 6th aphorism nature's law of cure is in 26th aphorism so 26th aphorism talks about nature's law of cure and 27th aphorism talks about therapeutic law of nature so 26 nature's law of cure and 27 therapeutic law of nature in 17th aphorism it has been mentioned that the the remedy which we are going to select will uh, resemble or will be having the similar symptoms similar to the disease but strength will be superior than disease so that is mentioned in 27th aphorism so 26 nature's law of cure and 27 is about therapeutic law of nature next comes modus operandi aphorism number 29 and 148 talks about modus operandi that is uh, nothing but uh, the mode or the most probable explanation for how homeopathic cure takes place we can have the exact process in 29th aphorism but in 148th aphorism uh, here it has been mentioned about chronic diseases and acute diseases when it will disappear and the doses which have been needed and those things they have discussed so 29 and 148 next it has been asked in on exam the greatest blunder in the history of medicine mentioned in which aphorism and the answer is 188 footnote what it talks about uh, here he is mentioning about local maladies so this consideration is greatest blunder in the history of medicine so he is here he is talking about local maladies or topical applications 
नेक्स्ट हैप्पी गो लकी ऑपरेशन वी ऑल नो अबाउट दैट एंड दिस हैज बीन मेंशन इन फिफ्टी वन ऑफ अरिजम नेक्स्ट कम्स कंजाइन मेलडी कंजाइन मेलडी इज मेंशन इन नाइंटी सेकेंड ऑफ अरिजम कंजाइन मेलडी इज नथिंग बट अ सिम्टम कॉम्प्लेक्स विच हैव बीन अल्टर्ड बाय द प्रीवियस मेडिसिन आल्सो सम ऑफ द ओरिजिनल डिजीज सिम्टम सो ऑल ऑफ दो सिम्टम कॉम्प्लेक्स शुड बी टेकन एंड कंप्लीट पिक्चर शुड बी फॉर्म्ड बिफोर प्रिस्क्राइबिंग द होम्योपैथिक रेमेडी सो कंजाइन मेलडी इज नाइंटी टू obvious cause mentioned in 93rd of arism uh, this is nothing but the personal history uh, if we ask privately the patient will tell uh, the symptoms or the causes of the disease uh, like poisoning attempt to suicide onanism unnatural debaucheries ories or imperfections in private part something about that so obvious cause 93 92 congenital malady as we know already 95 lesser accessory symptom lesser accessory symptom not accessory symptom next idiosyncrasy idiosyncrasy is mentioned in uh, 117th aphorism idiosyncrasy is also known as peculiar corporeal constitution they are the healthy persons but uh, they have the tendency to produce less morbid state by certain things otherwise they are healthy so idiosyncrasy is mentioned in 117 idiosyncrasy or peculiar corporeal constitution also the examples for idiosyncrasy has been given in footnotes footnote 1 and footnote 2 next this question also already asked in on exam where hanimen in our win which aphorism hanimen classified the symptoms answer is 153 in 153rd of arism uh, it has been given that characteristic symptoms and general or undefined symptoms there is no exact word that symptoms are classified into two but here uh, it has been mentioned that most striking singular uncommon peculiar symptoms are characteristic symptoms uh, if it demands little attention or if it is vague or indefinite character that will be mentioned as general or undefined symptoms so so it's like classification only so the answer is 153 and uh, this is most important 56th aphorism and footnote of 56 aphorism 56 talks about antipathy now mode of treatment or antipathic enantiopathic or palliative method of treatment but 56th footnote is about isopathy so 56 antipathy and footnote is about isopathy next moral remedy moral remedy is mainly mentioned in 17th footnote of arism but also in 26th footnote of arism if we are only having 17 in option we have to go for uh, footnote 17 but if we have both the options uh, 17th footnote as well as 26th footnote and the answer is both next in mental diseases it has been given Uh, in footnote of twenty two hundred and thirteenth aphorism, uh, while considering the remedy in mental diseases, we have to go for the remedy uh, which is suitable for the state of mind as well as disposition. So the symptoms should be matched with medicinal symptoms. So in this footnote, he is giving some cautions about uh, the remedies. If we are going to prescribe aconite, that patient should not be quiet and calm. or we should uh, we should give more attention to quiet and calm patient and it should not be uh, related with aconite and mild and phlegmatic patient uh, patients we have we should not opt for nuxvamica and happy gay and obstinate characters we should not go for pulsatilla and without vexation history and without fright history we should uh, think about or we should less th- we are let's think about ignatia so aconite not for quiet and calm patient and nuxvamica is not for mild and phlegmatic patient pulsatilla is not for happy gay and obstinate patients and ignatia should be thought of in case of vexation and fright next comes uh, 221 asorix mainly uh, here uh, some of the examples have been given for asorix asorix are nothing but the class of medicines uh, which are not antisorix can be called as asorix this question also asked in one exam which are all the antisorix uh, has given as an example 
by Hanuman himself. So here are the answers in twenty two hundred and twenty one. It has been mentioned. You have to remember this also. So belladonna, aconite, stramonium, hyoscyamus, and mercurius. These three delirium drugs have been already here. Belladonna. Hyos and stramonium. So these three things we can remember easily. Another two are aconite and mercurius. Next surrogates. One one nine footnote. Surrogates one one nine footnote. And this is also as in one exam. It is wrong to attempt. It is wrong to employ complex means when simple means suffice. Where it has been mentioned. The answer is two seventy four. Here, uh, Hanuman told that we have to prescribe single medicine and we should not uh, compound two medicines that will hinder the actions. So he, so this is talking about single medicine and compound medicine. Two seventy four aphorism. So that's all today. We will see you in next videos with some other aphorisms. Thank you.